Technical tips from my boyfriend. Let's use the Unreal Sequencer on VR input to build movie camera setups for footage of virtual environments as if you are filming live on set. Let's initialize Unreal. Starting with Plugins, go to Edit, Plugins, and search for the following. Virtual Camera, Take Recorder, Live Link, which has three relevant plugins, Open XR. Now you won't need the Oculus plugin, even if you're using an Oculus controller like I am, but you will want to enable the Steam VR. You'll see why later in the video. And finally, let's add Remote Session. In your project settings, we can help the real-time data reading feed with the following change. Engine, Rendering, Default Settings, Advanced, Frame Buffer Pixel Format, 8-bit RGBA. Now that Unreal is initialized, let's initiate the virtual production camera. Enable Live Link. I am using Unreal version 5.1 and will be until version 5.3. According to Unreal, there are conflicts with the 5.2 version of pixel streaming that requires workarounds for Oculus VR, which becomes too much of a hassle to train here. So, I'll be sticking to the stable version of 5.1 until new AV codecs are promised in version 5.3. That being said, the new updates in 5.1 create a messy pixel streaming interface too. So, unless you're tracking in camera lenses information or focal points, I'll be setting up my virtual production camera without pixel streaming. That is why I mentioned enabling the deprecating Steam VR plugin. We enabled the Take Recorder plugin for functionality, but we won't be using the actual interface for any of our recordings. So, I'm turning off the Take Recorder window. Build a new VCam camera. I have a full tutorial on building VCam cameras for Oculus, so feel free to take a look at that video if you're unfamiliar with the creating a new virtual production camera. Add a new VCam through the virtual production sub-menu. Go to VCam, Output Provider, None. Turn off pixel streaming. Turn off pixel streaming from the live link. Change live link subject to a VR controller. Initialization is complete. Let's focus on the recording process. The recording process is a loop of repeating steps for each camera shot. My clean and simple process cycles through these three steps. Number one, resetting sequencer. Number two, VCAM enabling and positioning. Number three, recording onto a duplicate proxy cam. Repeat these steps every time we record a new camera shot. Step number one, resetting sequencer. In sequencer, delete any VCAM camera and proxy camera tracks you may have. Now, re-add a fresh VCAM camera and proxy camera. Set your playback start position. This is where animations will start recording. Step number two, enabling and positioning the VCAM camera. Make the VCAM camera active in the outliner. Select the VCAM component. Turn off enabled in the details tab. Again, I have full tutorials that walk through the VCAM setups in more detail. Select the VCAM view in the viewport. Make sure that the look through camera is on. Move the camera. Turn on the enabled field. The proxy camera will automatically be spawned by Unreal to match the VCAM position. Sequencer recording will be using the proxy camera, something to keep in mind. What you record may be obscured or covered up with other camera shots in your sequencer. Things like the camera cuts track or other trackers may make you think that the VCAM VR isn't working. This is why we delete the VCAM and proxy camera after each recording. Step number three, recording on the duplicate proxy cam. Here's the trick. We will be using the Sequencer Record button and not the Take Recorder Record button. You'll see that the animation will run and a track is built inside of your sequencer as a solid block. This is different than the embedded takes 
that the take recorder builds in a sequencer recording. As you record, all other animations in the sequencer will play in real time. This means you can move your camera in reaction to characters moving inside of your virtual production set. Select the proxy camera track and viewport icon. Click the record button. You will have a three second countdown to get ready. Click stop. Now let's preview the shot. It may look like nothing was recorded, but you need to turn off the VCAM enabled field first. Great. Duplicate and name the recorded proxy camera. Notice that the outliner shows the new name and that the sequence that it is saved in. Okay, let's record another take. Step one, reset the sequencer. Delete the camera cuts, VCAM and proxy. Mute your other camera recordings. Now re-add a fresh VCAM and proxy camera. Step two, enabling and positioning the VCAM camera. Disable the VCAM camera. Select the VCAM camera in the viewport. Reposition the VCAM camera. Enable the VCAM camera. Step three, record onto the duplicate proxy camera. Enable the proxy track. Record. Duplicate and rename the shot. Continue through all your shots. Finishing up. Now, we have a set of normal nonlinear edit nonlinear. <laughs> now, now, oh shoot. Now we have a set of normal nonlinear editor cuts to play with on the timeline. We can use the camera cuts track as a shot list between our new shots. You insert shots from the current cursor position until the playback exit point. Pick your shot. Repeat. The camera cuts track is actually a little window looking vertically down the track list. In other words, you need the camera track block underneath the camera cut bindings. If you move the proxy camera block, then the camera cuts track looks at the proxy camera track without the recording movement. So, treat your proxies like you would in a nonlinear editor. Closing tips. Your recorded takes will not be saved as it would in the take recorder. It's all in your sequencer timeline. We are duplicating the proxy camera as a take. Let me know in the comments below what you think about the sequential nature of space-time. Or, if you prefer, something about this video, I guess? Should I do it again? <laughs>